Hey, what's up, guys? A new skillless golem battle healer deck just ascended to rank one in the world as the first deck in Ultimate Champion. And this broken card combination of golem battle healer got a big buff in the new meta. With the Dagger Duchess diving into the game, big beatdown pushes, especially the broken golem battle healer, have gotten significantly stronger. The Dagger Duchess does an extreme amount of damage early on, but when she's out of daggers, she tickles on defense. So when you wait until double elixir stacking up a ton of elixir collectors, you get the elixir advantage from the double elixir and the elixir collectors to build a massive medicine push. And when you have big cards on the map like Golem that can eat all the daggers, but you spam an endless amount of stuff in the back that's getting healed up by the battle healer while the Electro Dragon and Evolve Zap reset your opponent's defenses. I'm not joking, you can be absolutely awful at the game and beat players a lot better than you. Just get up elixir, drop a Golem and battle healer with an Electro Dragon, and you'll be surprised by how many opponents you stop. If you only have one evolution, use the Evolve Barbarians. It's time to play the number one deck in the world that allows you to be stupid and still assert dominance. And huge heal love to everyone that's supporting the channel with Critter Code Sir Tag. Yo, what's up, William? So, I feel like he's going to catch him. He's going to be dropping some ridiculous strategy at the start. I haven't seen anyone with William spelt like this. So, you know he's a unique individual. I'm going to go for Barbarians, make sure the bandit doesn't dash on our tower. And whenever I see a bandit at the river, we expect our opponent to be playing Battle Ram and use the new Ram Evolution. It is very hard to defend if you don't use Barbarians and Zap. It's just going to keep charging at your tower and you're going to have a bad time. Also, as you guys can see, the Dagger Duchess does really well in Single Elixir, but it does horribly into this deck in double or the later stages of the match. That's the reason that this Golem deck is so good right now. Everyone's running Dagger Duchess that is phenomenal against bait decks and, and Single Elixir. It's really strong. But if you play a deck that thrives in Double Elixir, that deletes the Dagger Duchess, because the daggers are going to be finite. So they won't have enough daggers in their arsenal to go and counter you. Also, we can activate King Tower with this. And I think that that's going to be a smart play. Because being able to shut down the bandit, even though we have an Elixir Collector in the middle, it's not something that people are anticipating. If you do that placement that I just showed, you'll be carrying away with a huge pot of Elixir trade. And opponents won't understand what hit them. So he lost everything there. We have an Elixir Collector in the field. We have King Tower activated. And just one more cycle, and we're back to another Elixir Collector like we never even left. So we're going to leave him with a face of utter chaos and disbelief. He's going to look at this and just be like, how do I do anything here? And the thing that we want to do is pop the ability, because we don't want the Royal Ghost to get too much value on our precious little prince. And then maybe making sure that they're separate enough that we can maybe finish off his little prince as well with a NATO. As you guys are probably noticing right now, I'm cycling a lot of my cheaper cards and guaranteeing that we're getting value with each transaction. If we Evo Barb's here, I'm going to wait a little bit because I wanted them to get on the Little Prince, but he was too good. He was a little bit too fast there. I'm going to go for a Zap to reset the Little Prince, and maybe one of the Barbarians will find its way onto the Mother Witch, but that doesn't happen. Dang it, dude. You actually are pretty decent at the game. Not going to fib. But you are no match for the Battle Healer. And the best thing about the Electro Dragon is it should reset the Mother Witch. The Mother Witch does not kill the Electro Dragon, and then we can heal up all the damage. And then we're back to another Elixir Collector. So the safety about this stag is the fact that you can consistently rely on defending if you don't want to overcommit. You just use your Barbarians and then you use maybe an Electro Dragon if you absolutely need to. But the Electro Dragon will reset your Elixir advantage since it does cost 5 Elixir. You're way better off doing other cards. I'm going to go in for an Evo Zap because I might be able to kill a Little Prince if we can just go for a Tornado afterward. Oh my gosh, he's going to lose his Little Prince right now. He can't feasibly put in any positive elixir trades in the left hand side into this electric dragon. And I should be able to pop the ability to finish off the rest of the battle rim as well. But not that bad for us. We can go for another elixir collector because I can guarantee that the Pekka is going to die. And now I'm pretty sure that I can tornado as well. Wow, he's getting frisky with me right now. <laughs> the fact that he went in for the zap is pretty funny because now I can go for a golem since we're up an absurd amount of elixir. So he has to go into evil barbarians. And if you're going to do that, you're destined to lose the game. I'm sorry, it doesn't even matter that you're going to have Evo Battle Ram. We can just pop our Barbarians and we should be able to shatter this. But yeah, he's able to knock it back, but it doesn't matter that much. He's going to have the arrows and that's not going to do enough. But despite him having Evo Battle Ram, as you can see, the Barbarians are all you need. As long as your tower is not at a really low spot, you should be fine. Because look at this goal. It's full HP with a freaking support of an Electro Dragon Battle Healer. We're not dragging on this game any longer. Our Electro Dragon is going to send this man straight to the Shadow Realm. 
And GG, that was a pretty fun game. As you guys can see, we love this deck. It's the epitome of toxicity. The Electro Dragon stays plugged in for the win because the Battle Healer keeps it alive for a century. It's so overpowered that it completely counters Pekadex. Yo, what's up, Lord Grimm? What's going on, my guy? So unfortunately, we are not blessed with the Dagger Duchess Tower that we're immediately able to overpower in Double Elixir. However, we get the Princess Tower, which is a little bit better for us than the worst possible tower of the Cannoneer. Cannoneer has so much damage, making every beatdown deck completely in fear. Anyway, this is not good for me. The guy goes in for an Elixir Collector, and my Elixir Collector is nowhere in sight. I looked left, I looked right, and there was no Elixir Collector in sight to be placed down. So, really bad for me. Really, really bad. I would like to go and cycle that, but... Oh my gosh! If I uh, cover my eyes, can we pretend that this is like not happening to me right now? I, I think that's the strategy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna zap on top of the Barbaril and then we're gonna try to get Barbarians down on top of the Musketeers so we don't lose our Electro Dragon. We're taking so much damage on the left-hand side, but he left me with no other option. And it gets even worse. The guy has a freaking Hunter. So y'all already know, we are about to get hunted by someone having a huge hard counter to me. This is a matchup that is extremely undesirable, and it's getting even worse. But now, I guess we can activate King Tower here with a Tornado, but... You know, I kind of sort of spent a lot of Elixir, and now I have to get a lot of damage by the Little Prince. I don't think he's going to be able to do that. If this guy has Earthquake, I'm going to cry. I'm going to quit the game. I'll never play the game again. I will immediately Rage Quit. I wouldn't, but like I think that that would be unwinnable for sure. And sometimes when that happens, you just think, yeah, it's whatever. It can't be done. You can't win that then. But this is a variable winnable situation. Even though we're down a lot, we can go for Battle Healer here and immediately afford our Barbarians on top of the Musketeers. Shut them down. Surprise! Goodbye. And we zap. And now I don't know if he's able to defend the Barbarians. This is really difficult for him to stop. Also, if you notice my card cycle, we were a couple away from just going in for the little prince and then going in for the elixir collector so it was pretty obvious for me to make that play always want to go little prince when we can just because it enables us to have a faster card cycle and then also on top of that we're able to go for more elixir collectors and if we're able to build up a big push i think we're in a really nice position so if he decides to go in for three musketeers i wonder if we can kill them with the evolved zap and tornado i've never done this before for science for science I hope this works. Yo, it just got deleted. Who needs Golem when you have Evolve Zap? There's no way. There's no way that everything dies here on the left-hand side too. I don't even have to do anything. I can freaking three crown him. Science is too strong. Science needs a nerf, guys. We created the Frankenstein push and it's nothing short of miraculous. This monstrosity of a deck should never have been unleashed in Clash Royale. It makes sense that it rushed to number one in the world and was the first deck in Ultimate Champion. Usually when you play against a three musketeer deck that goes Elixir Collector in the back when you have no big spell and you're just cycling all of your cards into three musketeers, it's an instant loss. But somehow, some way, this deck was able to bounce back. To put that in perspective, I maybe win that situation with other Golem decks one out of 50 games. So to have that happen there and make it feel rather easy is actually insane. And we on to the next one. So we're gonna go in for a zap on the tower and hopefully he just spams a lot of bridge spam directly into Barbarians. Actually scratch that, tornado time. I think it's gonna be worth it. I'm cycling our Little Prince and not cycling our Evolution just so we can activate King Tower with no damage taken on our Princess Tower. So, I mean, I guess we took zap damage, but that's really not memorable or anything that we have to worry about. And he's going to pop the Little Prince ability. You know what? Screw it. I'm going Barbarians right now. I would advise against this heavily. In most situations where you cycle your Barbarians directly into Little Prince, Little Prince survives and you feel like an idiot. But since the Little Prince will have to walk up, it will die to our Princess Tower. So even though it melts the Barbarians, it's better for us to lose the Barbarians and get to the Evolution and spend one more Elixir with the Barbs so then we can guarantee that we can get a lot more value. I think we get a lot more value with the evolution. I think that's not like a bad decision. Or maybe this is massive cope. Who knows? Anyway, we're in a tornado here. So then we should be able to finish off the Meganite. Pull it back a little bit. Yeah! Battle Healer is still alive too. No way. All right. If I was able to afford the ability and make sure that it could guarantee to be in front of the Battle Healer, you already know we would definitely do that. I can't do that though. I'm going to zap. And then we're back to an Elixir Collector. Always 
making sure to antagonize the opponent is the way that we like to play. But you know what's even better than that? Eating an entire royal ghost so we can toast and roast his tower with barbarians killing the... Wow, he's really going to ram rider into that? I thought I was just going to say bridge spam, but he donated five elixir. That is my entirety of Evolve Barbarians right then and there. And then I can cycle Tornado to melt the Little Prince before he's even ready. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Pops the Little Prince, the ability, and a zap. That's eight elixir. That is legitimately eight elixir, and we ate that up for breakfast with, you know, Tornado and then the Barbarians that we were already using to counter the ram rider. So, so many positive elixir trades are going my way, and that's the way that I like to play this deck. Melt your opponent's stuff, make sure you put yourself in a position where you're bound to succeed with a good golem, and then you pop through with the value. Unfortunately, the guy played really well. He went in for a Mega Knight, capitalized on a situation where now he can do dual lane pressure, but it's still not that big of a deal. Because if you are unaware, the Evolve Zap performs miracles into the Ram Rider. If you have Cannoneer, the Ram Rider actually doesn't get a hit on the tower then. But he's going to go for Evil Bats directly into the Princess Tower. I actually don't think that was good for him. Because we have the King Tower activated. I can ignore. And then we can spam more. Ignore and spam more is the motto. You know, we always have mottos for our decks. It's like, wham, bam, I bridge spam. Or just like meme -y stuff. Today, it's ignore and spam more. That is the way that you play this deck. When you're up Elixir, you destroy your opponent. So, yeah, we've got two golems on the map, and I don't think there's anything you can do. GG, my guy. <laughs> I would definitely cry because I would know that I was destined to die if I was in this situation from the Mega Knight player. Oh, all he can do is cry, and it feels superbly fitting there. Mega Knight is one of the most prevalent decks at mid-ladder, and this deck makes Mega Knight mega sad. All right, we got a game against someone with the bowler in the banner. And guess what, dude? We are going to be disappointing you today if you think we're running the Ram Evolution. No battle ram in sight. So we're going to zap the tower, and I bet you he's going to be playing Mega Knight just because we see Spear Goblins. Screw it. Let's tornado so we don't take any damage from the Spear Goblins. And then we can maybe go in for an Elixir Collector. A little bit risky for me to drop anything in the left-hand side since he's already done damage there. So then, you know... Oh, wait, what? What the heck? My man's got Spear Goblins with the Royal Giant. <laughs> the Royal Surprise is wrecking through. I think this guy is coming through like a cannonball. Oh, my gosh. I, uh, I really wasn't ready. I bet you he Fisherman, so let's pop the ability. So then he yoinks the Guardian, hopefully. Okay, well, whatever. It doesn't even matter, my guy. <sighs> All right, we're going to go in for a Barbarians on the right-hand side, and that is a Bowler. So, Bully is really good in the meta right now just because Battle Ram Evolution is absolutely everywhere. And if we activate King Tower with the Bowler, it doesn't matter. Oh, wait, those Barbarians are putting in work. Okay, so usually we would go in for Battle Healer here and then use Tornado with it, but we're not going to do that. We're going to drop our Battle Healer in the back of the Bowler in case this guy has Tornado, but he had already dropped it on defense, I think, if I remember correctly. Maybe I have a small brain, but I think he dropped Tornado. <laughs> anyway, we're in a pretty good spot because I am able to guarantee that we get a good defense here with Evolved Barbarians into the Evolved RG. Even if he fireballs, it doesn't even matter because the Evolved Barbarians do the dirty work before that even like kills my barbs. You have to fireball frantically very, very early on for that to be worth it for you. But since you let the Barbarians get a couple of sword swings in, that's all we need to make it happen. So, we can go in for our goal in the back and know that our opponent not only wasted an evolution, but had a negative elixir trade with the Royal Giant into the Evolved Barbarians. Negative one there. And then he dumps a negative four elixir afterward with a fireball. Imagine being in that deplorable of a position. Oh my gosh! My guy! Yo, that was really good until it wasn't for you. If you guys noticed what he did, he tried to get cheeky with me out here. He went in for a Barbarian Barrel. And that bar barrel was fully purposed to distract our electric dragon so the inferno dragon could melt my golem in time. But I caught wind of that and I said, nah, we win. And I decided to go in for the electro uh, zap just to reset everything. And I called it electro zap because it just feels fancy, you know? It's like that extra dish that you guys get from the restaurant that is just a salad, but they add all these different ingredient names that you don't really understand. It just obfuscates the actual meaning. <laughs> and then you look at it and you're like, Stupid dude just meant a zap. Yes, the Electro Zap is basically uh, what Clash Royale will do with all the Evolution's Mega and Elite cards in Clash Royale. And you'll never really understand what happened to the game. You'll just be like, wait, that's a Mega Elite Little Prince. 
What's that? Seriously, I wonder what the game's gonna be like three years from now and how many crazy new things are gonna be adding to the game. After decisively dominating that dude, we've got our head in the sky and we're probably overthinking what's happening with Clash Royale. It frees up your brain while you collect the free wins. Yo, this guy's got the Dagger Duchess banner and we are ending with a banger. This is exactly what we wanna be playing against. Dagger Duchess is phenomenal in single elixir, but it gets shut down by decisive big golem pushes in the late game. So, we're gonna say see you later to this guy as soon as we hit him up in the late game with the double or triple elixir push of doom. As you guys already know, it is important for us to get there. So, we are gonna be going in for our battle here in the back, and I actually wanna go in for a zap on his little prince. Oh! No, I suck! Why did I do that? I thought I was clean with it. I thought I would clean up the Little Prince and the bats, but he actually dropped it in a good placement. How dare you, sir? How dare you be good at the game? So, I thought I was good, but I guess not. We can activate King Tower here with the... Nope, I'm not going to do that. All right, how do we defend this? I think we go here, and then we don't lose the game because the Barb's Battle Ram would have lost me the game, but the Mother Witch doesn't do as much damage. Also, tornado value, baby! He wasn't ready! And hopefully he's deady. Please, please be deady. Okay, that was one of the worst jokes of my life. You guys have full permission to flame me in the comment section. I will never say that again. It really sounded like daddy, and it was just a little bit awkward, not gonna lie. Anyway, we're gonna go in for the little prince in the back, and we are making it happen. We're gonna go for the elixir collector in the back as well, and we're just gonna build up a big push. We are destined to dominate in double and stay alive and stabilize in single. And I tried to do something stupid and wow, who would have guessed? It didn't work out so well. I mean, we have two elixir collectors, so it's not bad. Also, I mean, wait, did we just kill the battle ram? If this kills the battle ram, we're phenomenal. Oh, that was so close to screwing me over. Okay. All right. I see you, sir. Also, if we go in for that, we should just heal everything up. And then we go little prince. Yo, I think this guy is going to wince because this is going to be really hard for him to defend. Even if he goes in for that, we just zap here and the, the stupid battle healer just heals everything up. Do we even need a golem right now? For real. I'm asking y'all. Do we need a golem? We are a strong, independent win condition without a golem. We wham, we bridge spam, and we spam more until our opponents just succeed the game. There is no thing that you can do left in your arsenal, sir. You are unequipped and just kind of devoured. We're taking all of your towers, and this is not a good time for you. I mean, I should have zapped that a century ago. I feel slightly stupid, but, you know, that's kind of the theme of the game. You're not supposed to play smart when you're playing this deck. If you're playing smart, you're playing wrong. As you hit your opponent's three crown like a gong, and they go out singing a sad song. And I'm not going to lie, playing a deck this dirty feels unbelievably wrong. Feel the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day.